Recently, Ubisoft released a deep dive for the Division Heartland and inside it we were given a bunch of new information about this new up-and-coming extraction shooter game. By now, if you're interested about this game, you probably have already seen the trailer, so I will not be bothering you with the same information you've heard a thousand times again. Instead, I'll be presenting to you five things you probably missed while watching the Division Heartland trailer. First, we got a day and night cycle, and specifically the clock indicator that comes with it. As some of you probably know, this game is going to be PvEVP, but most players had questions on when is PvP going to be enabled, or if there are going to be different modes for PvE only. Well, this clock, right below the minimap, might be the key to our questions, because during the day we can see it showing a white progress bar until the night hits, and the night icon is being displayed as a red rogue icon. During the night, this rogue icon is being displayed alongside some PvP gameplay, and I personally didn't see any PvP during the day, so to me, that means that during the day we have no PvP happening, but during the night, players are able to go rogue on other agents. One thing to keep in mind though, is that you could technically stay inside the map only during the day to not engage in any PvP, but as the devs said, the night is when better enemies and therefore loot is going to be spawning. Next up is something that a lot of you may have noticed, but I still wanted to mention, and that is sliding. We all know at least some games that have sliding as an option for movement, and I for one find it very satisfying and fun to use when it's done right. During the trailer, I think we only have one instance where sliding is shown inside the Division Harland. And also, I want to add that this is the first time we see sliding inside the Division franchise as a whole. Yes, we had variations of it when getting into cover, but never as a standalone thing of its own. While I'm unable to tell much only from this clip, I hope that sliding is going to change up a bit the pace of gameplay. Maybe we'll be able to use it as means of faster transportation or as a way of maneuvering around enemies. Either way, I'm excited to try this one out in the beta. Looking at our HUD, which has been moved from the center of the screen to the right side, we have a new slot and that is for the new melee weapons. Again, this is something we didn't have inside the previous two games, but it was something that was asked for since the beginning of the division. Throughout the gameplay we see a couple of different melee weapons being used, such as a tomahawk, a climbing axe, a normal axe, a machete and some others I think. Of course, these weapons are also shown with some skins, being a free-to-play game, that was something to be expected. While the trailer has shown these weapons being used only to finish knocked players, I'm guessing we'll be able to use them for doing normal damage as well, but I'm curious if they'll have any other use cases, because for now it doesn't seem like it. One other thing that I've noticed in the deep dive is that for a couple of frames we are able to see a player get knocked, and when he got down, he was given the option to self-revive for one health kit. Even though this might not seem like much of a change, it means that the reviver hive from the second game, maybe the hive entirely, will probably not make its appearance inside the Division Harland. On the other hand, this also means that to the hopes of a lot of players, the Division Harland takes inspiration from the survival game mode from the original The Division, because this mechanic of self-rezzing for one health kit was introduced there. The last detail that I've spotted in the trailer is the new enemy faction that we are going to fight against and they are called the Vultures. Rightfully so, their icon, which is the skull of a vulture, can be seen on various locations on the map. Locations that we can go clear to get some of the higher tier loot, which also includes these chests that require vulture keys. Knowing the division, I don't think this will be the only faction that there is going to be present in the rural space of Heartland. And that was it. These were my five more important things that I found inside the trailer. If I missed something else or if you have any suggestions for the future, please don't hesitate to tell me in the comments. And yeah, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.